Good morning, afternoon, evening, as the case may be. In your part of the world, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Zen Archer. This is Zen Adventures in Minecraft Zen Tutorials. I'm going to show you how to take advantage of a skeleton spawner if you find one early on in the game before you actually have materials to do much with it. So, let's get started. Single player mode, and this is the uh, seed that had the... Uh, the village uh, spawner that I had shown you before, I call it the uh, House of Ill Repute or whatever, uh, Minecraft War House. So we're playing that seed. I'm going to show you what the seed is so that you can experiment yourself and maybe you can come up with uh, something that's better than this that, ha that has limited resources when you have limited resources. I'm going to make some changes. It's kind of noisy over there. So I'm going to set this to peaceful first. So we have no creatures, and I can just kind of give you a tour of this method of taking advantage of dungeon and a spawner. So uh, also answer some questions along the way and uh, give you some more information. So here we go. First thing I want to do is I want to set the time to daytime. Time, set, day, bada boom, let there be light. And we'll go down here. I fancied this up a little bit. made like a little pagoda house in order to get down to it. But um, let, me, let me start off with showing you. If you are down in a mine and you are mining around and you suddenly see cobblestone. That's, this is what cobblestone looks like with the default texture pack. You see cobblestone down in a mine and you know nobody else has been there. You have a dungeon and inside there is some type of a spawner. Now, sometimes a wall's missing, or it's got a, it usually has some kind of a hole in it so those creatures can get out in order to get you. So you'll have to deal with the ones that come out. What you want to do is run in, put torches all over the spawner, and kill everything in there, and then you're ready to go to work. So let me show you what's going on inside here. I am in creative mode so that I can show you this. But I'm going to show you what is actually going on inside. There's our spawner right there. And this is easy peasy way to take advantage of a uh, skeleton spawner. This is a skeleton spawner. Let me get some torches in my hand, put some light in here so we can see. I will fly around a bit. Alright, so when you get to the spawner, the first thing that you want to do is you want to put a torch on top. And then you want to put a torch on all four sides. Now that's probably not going to work because the water's here. But uh, you put a torch on all four sides and on the top, and that'll stop it from working. Um, so once you've got that done, then you come over and you put your first pail of water right there. Right below where that torch is at. Now I found if you go to this corner and put it in the same place, then the area right here in front of the spawner will be dry. And you don't want that. So the solution is... To move it forward one block right there put your water right here and then it'll flow now it's going to flow all the way out to against the wall and you want to stop it so the solution to that here's what happens if you don't have a sign there you'll see water flows down there so the solution to that is just to take a sign and put on the wall and that'll stop the water from flowing so we have a water flow that is dragging anything in this room down here and into this pit. Now inside this pit, what I've done is I put down sand and then I put some cactus on top of the sand. You have to open up, open up all four sides because it has uh, uh, needles on it and if there's anything against the needles you won't be able to place it. So open up all four sides and then put it down and then you have to put them two apart. What's below me is a hopper and a hopper only requires five pieces of iron and one chest in order to create that hopper. What the hopper is, is basically it's a funnel that will funnel things that fall into it or are placed into it into something else. It could be into a dispenser, it could be into a chest, but that's what it does. That's its function. Now one of the cool things about the hopper is even if you're not going to put it feeding into something, if you carry one in your inventory, it has its own inventory. And that inventory is five spaces, and you can put things that are different into the hopper's inventory. 
Now, what happened there is it went in the hopper and then it went into the chest. But this is what's in the hopper. So if the hopper is just in your inventory, then it will have five spaces and you can put multiple different things in there. So you can increase your inventory uh, by quite a bit. So what I accidentally did was put stuff in the hopper. That's not what I really wanted to do. So this, that's what's going on inside here. Let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this. And get rid of this. I'm going to put one block right here just to kind of close this up a little, make it a little darker in here, and show you this part of it by turning on the creatures. It's kind of loud, so I'll just put them on for a minute so you can see what happens. So they are spawned in, and they fall into the water, and they get swept down onto the cactus where they die. There's no buttons to push, there's no levers to turn. They fall down there, and they die. And that's any time you're in the vicinity of this area. And I don't know if it's 32 blocks, or 36 blocks, or 10, or... or uh, 16 blocks, but when you're in this general vicinity, this is going to be active, and those skeletons are going to be created. So this is what's happening inside the room. They're getting swept down, and you'll see this guy standing here, and he's not hes not being hurt right now because he's against the wall. But the moment that he moves against that cactus, he'll die. Just like that. Nice of him to help us out there. So that's what's going on inside the room. Let me turn this back off so that you don't have to listen to that noise over me. And show you the rest of the story. Let's go out right here. And we'll close that up. Alright, so then I made a stairway down. I actually worked, worked backwards. I worked from inside out. But uh, I made that about four deep put my cactus in. There's the cactus that they were standing by. And you have to put them one apart because of the uh, because of the, the needles. You can't put them together or you can't put them against another block. So you have to have them clear on all four sides. So then I put in a hopper. And this is what a hopper looks like. And the most important thing about a hopper is, see that little piece right there? It's like a funnel, and it has to feed into the chest. If it doesn't feed into the chest, it won't work. So you put your chest down. Yeah, I got a chest here. Okay, I don't see one here, so we'll just give ourselves a chest. Put a chest right in here in my inventory, and then we'll swap them. All right. So you put a chest down. And that hopper has to feed into it. The way you get that to work is when you go to put your hopper down, point at the chest and hold your shift key down and click. And you'll see the funnel part is going into the chest right there. Now, if you, if you put the hopper down without doing that, if you put it down like this, it feeds into the floor, and that doesn't do anybody any good. And that is not going to work, and, and you're not going to get the desired result. So put your pointer on the chest, hold your shift key down, and right-click, and that will feed whatever, whatever you put in this will then go. We'll put this crafting table. Whatever you put into this, whoops, let's try that again. There we go. Whatever you put into there, you end up inside the chest. So that's how that works. All right. So that's that's pretty much it. Uh, you you put the hopper as the floor for the skeletons to stand on while they're being killed. They can't go through the hopper, but their drops will. So their arrows and the bones and their bow and arrow their bows if they drop those. Any armor that they might be wearing that they drop will also go into these chests. And all you have to do is come over and pick it up. It's, it's really that simple. This has to stay open because if I go to put a block in here, it'll knock that cactus out. So I put half slabs in here to make sure the skeletons that are there cannot shoot at you when you're down here. Now, you want this area lit up, but you also want to keep it dark so that the, your spawning will be the best. So I set my, my torch back in a hole somewhere like that. So that's, uh, that's it. That all, all you're required to have is some iron and some wood. 
Um, you do have to go out to a desert and find some cactus and find some sand. But uh, those are easy to find once you find a desert. Easy to get. And then uh, you can take advantage of that spawner that you found. Uh, with uh, virtually no supplies at all. So then what happens is, I'll show it to you as it happens. We'll go back to hard mode. <coughs> Pardon me. And skeletons are falling down in here. On top of the cactus or beside the cactus, they're dying. And then their drops will end up in one of these chests. Now this is not the most efficient, absolutely is not the most efficient way to get the, um, not the most efficient way in order to get the arrows and stuff. This is very inefficient way. It's slow. But if you're working in the area, trading with the villagers, doing some gardening, catching up on your rest, um, this is an excellent thing to do because you're in the area or if you you know have a hidey hole next to it and you're working next to it and the whole time you're working these skeletons would be getting killed and their drops will be ending up in these chests uh, why it's so quiet right at this moment I can't tell you I don't know but they're just waiting to wash down so as you can see it's not the fastest not the fastest method but it's functional and over a period of time, the chest fill up and you can use the arrows. I've gotten a few arrows and bones from there as well as a bow. So there you go. Now, this would be the predecessor. This would be the predecessor to the other mob grinder that I showed you that uses redstone and slime to make sticky pistons where you just flip a switch. It's much more efficient. You get many more arrows, a lot faster. But this would be the step, uh, the first step in an automated killer, automated skeleton killer. The method before this would be to simply make a hole and put a door on it and then uh, uh, open it up and just reach in with your sword and kill the the skeletons and the upside to that is if you kill a skill if you physically kill the skeletons yourself you'll also get XP as well as the arrows and bones so that would be the first method put a door and uh, a half slab and then just reach in and kill them then go in occasionally and clean up second method would be this and the third method would be the um, the bone cruncher that I had showed you earlier. Now I will be doing a tutorial on all three methods and, but I want to do one tutorial that explains how to build each one of these. So I just wanted to show you this. This is uh, uh, my own design, something I came up with. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you will subscribe if you haven't done so yet to Zen Adventures MC at YouTube and uh, if you have questions or ideas or you'd like to uh, send me a seed for the bad seed challenge uh, by all means please do I would would love to hear from you and would love to hear you know what's on your little mind and whatever I can help you with be more than happy to do so until next time as always this is Zen Archer saying you be well and careful out there